our topic for this afternoon is work-life balance in contemporary times, avoiding burnout. I'll hand over to the moderator, Van. Thank you very much. A good afternoon to you, Leonard colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. For our speaker this afternoon, we have a specialist family physician at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. She is a member of the West African College of Physicians, as well as the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. She holds an MPH from the University of Ghana School of Public Health. Prior to that, she obtained undergraduate degrees from the University of Minnesota, as well as the University of Ghana, Legon. Her interests are in preventive health and well being, especially amongst adolescents. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome Dr. Betty Banker, who is our speaker for this afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in fact, this was a little bit of a short notice, but I hope I can do justice to the topic. So we are going to talk about work-life balance in contemporary times, avoiding burnout. And by way of outline, we're going to talk about some definitions. Um, we'll talk about work, what is work-life balance, what is stress uh, in burnout, and then some solutions and prevention. So what is work-life balance? So work-life balance refers to the level and prioritization between personal and professional activities in an individual's life, and then the level to which these activities related to their job are present in the home. Work-life balance is a topical issue nowadays um, because of we know that there's increased amount of technology that removes the importance of physical location in defining the work life balance. So previously it was difficult or impossible to take work home, but right now, because of COVID, we can all work from home really. We are finding out that there are so many things that we can do without having to physically move. And also we know that the increase in mobile technology, you know, cloud-based software, and then the proliferation of internet has made it much easier for employees to be permanently at work. So you don't close and you get in your car and go home, but then you live with, you wake up with your work, you go to sleep with your work. And there's blurring and there's distinction between the professional and the personal. Access to the workplace have replaced the authoritarian control of managers. So it could be that your, your manager at work would be very authoritative and well, authoritarian and you won't have time to be able to do any, have any personal time, but right now you have it at home, so you really can't get away from that. How about stress? Stress can be defined in many ways. Um, I picked three of them because um, hopefully everybody can relate to um, a definition or two. So in the medical sense, um, stress is a physical, mental, and emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension. And stresses can be external from the environment. So um, psychological or social situations or internal. So from illness, um, those with chronic diseases, you can have stress or maybe a medical procedure that you undergone. And then the psychologist also defines stress as a process whereby an individual perceives and responds to events are praised as overwhelming or threatening to one's well-being. And then human resource management, they define stress as the state of mental and emotional pressure or strain. And this is caused by challenging or unfavorable circumstances. It is an outside force that rules an individual's feelings and behavior. So the causes of stress. One of the, there are various causes of stress, but these ones have been, you know, highlighted because that's what we find um, quite frequently. So personality type, we talk about type A personality type, B personality. So um, people who have high achieving personalities 
they uh, they do everything with intensity and ambitious they have stress quite often and then we have perfectionism and perfectionism can be a good trait but then it also leads to greater lows when there are disappointments so when when you fall you fall really hard because you are a perfectionist in everything and then excessive hours of working that also tends to be um, a source of stress and then you can have the professional culture i was saying that you know going i i know that my you know that lawyers have a very stressful work <laughs> so in your professional culture there's a competitive environment so and they say that it's um it's really built on a tradition of overwork as a badge of honor so if you are overworking that means you are a good lawyer so <laughs> and then there could be lack of support so extreme focus generating on generating profit you overlook wellness um, mental health access to support because you are very focused on um, having a successful um, practice so this is my field the effect of stress on the body what does it do from head to toe okay so in the brain you may get headaches you have feelings of despair lack of energy sadness nervousness anger easily and get very irritable um, you have trouble concentrating and then you have problems with memory you can't remember things and then you get more frustrated because you can't remember and then you can have anxiety panic all of these things affect affects you and then the heart you can have um, your heart can beat faster that's palpitations actually feeling your heart beat and then rise in blood pressure and then there's increased risk of high cholesterol and the heart attack we know that um, when your blood pressure goes up and you end up with hypertension that predisposes you to diabetes which they work hand in hand and then there's atherosclerosis, which is also caused by stress. I mean, eventually stress, not directly, but it, it predisposes to that. And then when you come to the stomach, it can cause nausea, stomach ache, weight gain. People think that oh, when you are relaxed and you know happy, then you put on weight. That's our culture. But really, when you are stressed out, you can eat a lot and not do much, and then you end up putting on weight, which would be part of a, a vicious cycle. And then there's increase, you can have increased appetite or decreased appetite. And then the pancreas, it gives you an increased risk of diabetes. We know that um, diabetes, especially type two diabetes, is when you have insulin resistance and or you have um, uh, insulin insufficiency due to um, it's being not effective. So stress also produces that. And then when you come to the intestines, it can cause diarrhea, constipation, other digestive problems, uh, reproductive organs for women. They can have irregular periods. They can have reduced sexual desires for men. It can cause impotence, low sperm count, and reduced sexual desire. And then generally, skin problems, muscle aches, tension, risk of low bone density, weakened immune system, especially now, it's been very difficult for us because we know that COVID is around and it really depends on how strong your immune system is. And stress re releases, I mean, stress causes the immune system to, to come down. So you are more predisposed to catching viral diseases, for example. So one being COVID. And then it's harder to fight off when you do get it. So these are some things that just a broad overview. It affects the body, the mind, emotions, and behavior. So for your behavior, for example, you become accident prone. You drop things. Right? There's loss of appetite, loss of sex drive. You drink more. You have insomnia. You're not able to sleep well at night. You are restless. Those who smoke, smoke more and emotions you don't you, there's a loss of confidence you are a bit more fussy and irritable you could be apathetic you could be apprehensive 
and then the body we've talked about the different types of um, uh, sequelae you could have so the head it prevents infections because your immune system is down and you can have tough muscles you can have muscle twitches fatigue breathlessness all part of um, panic attacks that you could get anxiety that you could get and then in the mind you can have muddled thinking you can worry a lot your judgment can be impaired nightmares indecisions you can be negative about everything and then have hasty decisions So the next is the burnout. Yeah. Okay. So this is literally what happens. <laughs> so what is burnout? It's a multidimensional process with three central um, definitions. So you have emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and reduced personal accomplishment. This is the definition by Maslach and Jackson. So it's this um, Maslach burnout inventory that I wanted to actually bring up, but I didn't have much time. So we could know how many of us are burnt out and how many are not. <laughs> we actually had. Um, we had this presentation at the, with the uh, West Africa College, um, the physicians, and we were surprised how many of us were burnt out and we didn't even know. So it would have been next time we'll just bring it so that we'll know where we stand. Okay, and also can be defined as a syndrome of emotional exhaustion, cynicism, depersonalization in relationships with workers, and reduced personal accomplishment that can occur in any individual due to excessive work in stressful conditions. So the WHO defines um, burnout according to the International Classification of Diseases, the ICD, as a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. And the three dimensions, as I've mentioned before, you have feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion. There's increased mental distance from one's job or feelings of negativity or cynicism related to one's job. And then there's reduced professional episcopal capacity. And um, according to the WHO, this defined um, burnout to refer to a phenomenon in the occupational context and should not be applied to describe experiences in other areas of life. So according to their ICD-11 definition, it's strictly for occupational purposes. So some statistics, I didn't get any from Ghana. So um, this is one that we from America and the UK. So the Hazelden Betty Ford Foundation and American Bar Association, they found that 21% of licensed employed attorneys are problem drinkers. 20% suffer some level of depression. 19% struggle with symptoms of anxiety. And then a survey that was done, um, it was a cross-sectional study that was done at the Yale Law School in 2014, showed that 70% of those who were surveyed struggled with mental issues while they were in law school. And then the ALM's Mental Health and Substance Abuse Survey had about 3,800 respondents. And with those, 31.2% felt they were depressed, 64 felt they had anxiety, 10.1% felt they had an alcohol problem, and then about 3% felt they had a drug problem. So there are subtypes of burnout. Um, so we can look through and then see which ones we just might identify with. There's a frenetic subtype. This is per the person who's ambitious, overloaded, and then involved. 
it's a state of high motivation in which suffering is derived from their lack of ability to recognize their limitations. So you feel like you need to be doing it. You have to, you can do it. And you don't really take into consideration the fact that you are only human after all. And then there's the under challenged and the subtype there's indifference, there's lack of self-development, just bored. So the person suffers from losing sight of the natural right of a personal, a personal development and is invaded by feelings of guilt due to ambivalence they feel for their work and by their desire for change. So they, they are bored, they don't really want to do anything, but they, are, they feel bad about not being able to do anything. And then there's one out where you are unacknowledged. Whatever you do, nobody sees what you're doing. There's little control and then is neglectful. And so this could trigger important health motivation impairments. So as well as feelings of guilt resulting from they are not fulfilling adequately the responsibilities of their post. So they are worn out, they are tired of doing the same thing over and over again, but there is no motivation to really do anything different. So signs of um, lawyer burnout. I'm not a lawyer, so maybe you can agree or <laughs> prove me wrong. So exhaustion, extreme fatigue. Any witnesses? <laughs> Detachment as being disengaged and dreading the day-to-day -day practice. And then unable to concentrate. There's lack of attention. You miss little details in um, cases. And then there's self-medication. You know, to get through the day, you have to take a little alcohol or some other medication to just help you to get, to, to get things moving. And then there's no work-life balance talked about before and you are missing out on family and then personal time and then there are relationship troubles there's deteriorating relationships with your spouse or your partner and also with your children and you have the feeling of being stuck you work hard but not getting anywhere like the hamster in the wheel you keep running 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 but you don't go anywhere you are still caught in the same wheel and then being always stressed. So there's chronic stress and that has medical implications, which we've talked about um, before. So solutions and preventions, what can we do about this? So we take a step back, we assess the situation and then we seek ways to curtail the lawyer burnout. So looking at the individual, individual promotion. So you look at um, relationships. Next slide, next slide, please. Okay. So you ensure protected time for significant other and family members. I think um, a lot of the times we think, oh, well, we are making money or we are working to bring money home for the family, but then Maybe that's not what they want at that time. Like we've had different, I, have, I work with adolescents and I've had adolescents come and tell me that, you know, that they have problems at home with their parents. Why? Because mommy is never there and daddy is never there. Well, they are at work, they are getting everything that you need. Whatever you ask for, for you know, whatever you're asking for, they can provide for you. They said, no, I, that's not what I want. I want them to be home. So getting everything, all the material things and then coming home and they don't appreciate that because that's not what they want. What they want is a personal relationship. So that is very, very important. And so you have to make sure that we have to make sure that we have protected time. If the phone is going to be off on the weekends, it's off on the weekends, it's family time. And then the spiritual practice, um, personal attentiveness and then spiritual aspect of self. So whether you're a Christian or whatever your religion is, that also helps that you protect that time. And then your work attitude, finding meaning in your work and then limiting work practice. You have to have control over your schedule. 
you have to be at a point where you are able to say that, okay, I'm going to be doing eight hours a day. And after that, when I'm leave, after that, even being at home, the laptop goes off after eight hours. And then self-care is very, very important. We tend to take care of other people, but to ourselves. We are taking care of this person, that person, that person, but then we don't take care of ourselves, which is very, very important. So you have to cultivate personal interest and self-awareness. Look for something else apart from practicing law. Look for a hobby, play golf, play tennis, go swimming, something cook, learn to dance, something else. Okay. And then <laughs> professional help when needed. Um, sometimes it's difficult for us to ask for help. Um, we know that health is not just having a fever or having a headache. You can have psychological tiredness or fatigue that makes you unwell. And sometimes when we don't see that, you know, somebody is obviously excuse me, vomiting or, you know, having unable to move, we think that person is okay, but no, it's not. And it's okay to ask for help. And then life philosophy. So having a positive outlook is sometimes something that we have to consciously make an effort to do. You identify and act on your values and then also identify the stress that you, you are exposed to and then try to limit it so that you have a work and home balance, a better work and home balance. Yeah. So organizational promotion, I put this in there because I know some of us have our practices and then we, it's something that we can take back to um, help with our, the mental health and well-being of our employees. So we need to have adequate support services secretarial support, administrative support, that helps to release, to release our stress. And then the collegial work environment, you have to have healthy relationships and common goals. If something happens at work, let's talk about it. Let's solve it so that no one has any bitterness or you know, hard feelings. And then you have to have, as part of your core values, mental health and well-being is also very important. And that has to be part of your mission. And then minimizing work home interference and flexibility in childcare and scheduling. So as um, I've talked about before, in this COVID situation, you are bringing, you have work at home, but you have to make the conscious effort. Even if it's just a study that you, you do your work in, when time is up, just come out, close the door and don't go back in there. At least have that, um, have that physical um, end to the day. And then, Promoting work-life balance, ensuring vacation time, and limiting overtime. Sometimes I find that, um, for us at least, um, when you go on your leave or your vacation, that is when you do locum. It's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> yes, that's when you do galamse. It's not supposed to be like that. Vacation is important that you take the vacation. Because working hard and working hard and working hard, one day you won't even be there to enjoy whatever it is that you have, you have acquired. So it is very important that yes. um, I'm a fanti, and sometimes you know fanties they say that oh um, we build our houses in our stomach because we eat a lot and we enjoy you know uh -huh, we eat cheese and cake uh, and cheese and all of those things. But the thing is, you need to also enjoy your, the fruits of your labor. You need to take time out and say, I have worked hard. I need to take some time out. You are, giving, you are paying other people's school fees. You are helping this person and that person. But how about yourself anyway? So establishing mentoring is also important to make sure that in your practice, at least you have somebody, one or two people that you, you can identify, that you can teach and mentor to take over from you so that you are not thinking of, well, I'm not available. What is happening in the office? You know that I can have confidence that everything would be fine. When I come back, the building will still be standing. Yeah. And then consider periodic sabbaticals. So in, in summary, next slide, please. Okay, so in summary, your, prof your profession puts you at a high risk for work-life imbalance, stress, and burnout. I'm sure you all agree. 
The next is to step back, assess, ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. It is very okay to ask for help because if you don't, what can happen is probably something that you wouldn't wish for. Yeah. And then recharge your batteries. Sleep, rest, prioritize. Try to integrate extracurricular activities and then have some downtime. So decide that, okay, there's going to be Easter break coming. I'm going to take some time out. Even if it's that Easter Monday you need to work, fine, you can work, but then pick another day during the week to make sure that you do take that time for yourself. And then you set boundaries. You set boundaries. You are not taking phone calls at a certain time of the day or you block some time off in the weekend that I'm not taking any calls. And then be true to your values. And then automate aspects of your legal practice. Use technology. There are some things that you can easily program into your computer to remind you to, you know, just different things like that. That makes life a bit easier. So uh, remember that you are the center of your work-life balance. Be realistic. Don't take too much upon yourself. Maintain balance in a balanced way. Take your work under control. Figure out what you want. Admit that you have a problem if you do, when you do, and then pay attention to small things. So the take home that I have is that you are the most important person in your life. Birthday gift to yourself. I always tell everyone that on your birthday, usually you get a cake, there's a party, somebody does it for you, surprises galore. But what do you do for yourself? So on your birthday, what I tell my patients and what I do myself is on that day, go and have a physical done. Check your cholesterol, check your liver, your kidneys, do an ECG, run all of that. And that is what you do for yourself every birthday so that you know that at least every year you've done a complete physical check that is for yourself and then i say be selfish to be selfless what does that mean when you take care of yourself sometimes you think you are so busy and you don't have time you know you need to take care of this person and that person and that person when you drop what happens to those people so you take care of yourself so that the person the people who are depending on you will have you for a longer time so in that way, you become selfish to be selfless. So really, by taking care of yourself, you're actually helping the other people who depend on you because you will be there, you will be healthy. Yeah. I think that's it. Thank you. Right, so that was the delivery by Dr. Betty Banker at very short notice. Um, we need to apologize for the absence of Dr. Edwin Beryl Ado Opari Loco, who was originally scheduled to deliver this um, talk, but then at short notice, she was unavoidably unavailable. So we apologize for her absence and we are extremely grateful to um, Dr. Betty Banker for not just um, filling in the void, but then you were here in your own very right. Um, there was one question that I struggled to answer. It was a non-academic question in the course of my LLM studies. And at a social function, the question that was directly put to us was, what do you do to unwind? And I didn't seem to know what it meant to unwind under those circumstances. And there were a few people who, when I told I was coming to, who, when they got to know I was facilitating this session, they said, well, if burnout is included, then it is for me. So I have taken it in good faith. And I believe that whoever is in the legal profession and all of us are involved at um, a point, at one point or the other, in one way or the other, we experience stress, we experience burnout. So my take home is to maintain balance in a balanced way. Let's take care of ourselves so that we will live longer to continue taking care of others. We thank you, Dr. Beryl Banker. There is one question, so let's um, have it. I think it's on the screen. 
I'm from Charlotte um, Kwachi. Sorry, the last one. Okay, so it says, thank you, doctor, for your presentation. Apart from panic attacks, one could also be dealing with anxiety disorder. My question is, how can one deal with anxiety disorder? So we take this opportunity to encourage um, our colleagues to quickly send in their questions via the chat console. Doctor, you have the floor. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, um, anxiety disorder can be, depending on how severe it is, management can be different, either by non-pharmacological or pharmacological. So that you use medication or not, but then it really depends on how severe it is. Um, you could, if um, you, it could be managed by maybe cognitive behavioral therapy, so or medication, as I said. So depending on how severe it is, you could either see a psychologist or a psychiatrist for that. I hope I've answered. Very well, colleagues. Um, this ends the first segment of the second session of the first day of the Bench Bar Faculty Conference. Um, there is another upcoming talk, and I would introduce my colleague, who is the moderator for the next session. She is in the person of Susanna Afutu. Um, she will come and then take us. Um, she is a moderator for the second session, and she will take up the microphone shortly to introduce the next speaker. Thank you. <laughs>